How's it going, everybody? My name is Phil. <laughs> First blooper of the day, all right? How's it going, everybody? My name is Zane from Coffee and Critique. We have a really special guest. We have Carrie Ann Hoskins, and she's gonna be with us explaining her process. You might know her for being the original Sonya Blade from Mortal Kombat, but she's also a brilliant artist, and we're gonna dig a little deeper in that. Um, so, for, for, first and foremost, uh, how are you doing, Carrie? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. I know, um, I know we were talking in brief on, um, like, you know, here's the funny thing, because everyone keeps asking me how I was able to get, because they thought, like, oh, the movie Sonya Blade? Like, no, 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 the original <laughs> Sonya Blade. And that, and the reason why it was funny, because everybody knows that that's my favorite video game character, because that's, that's like the ultimate. It's Scorpion, and then there's Sonya Blade. So... They they asked how that I, I was able to contact you. I honestly believe that you were doing cosplay for Sonya Blade, not knowing that you yourself <laughs> were Sonya Blade. So when you responded, I had to do a double take. I was like, wait a minute. And I started scrolling. And I was like, wait, no, 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 what? And then the fact that you responded was so cool. So I appreciate you responding. Respond to everybody. Sometimes it takes quite a while. But <laughs> you had my attention because of your work. I went on your on your Instagram and I was looking at your work and I absolutely loved it. So that got me interested right away. Thank you. I know you mentioned the squid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was funny um, how that, that shoot even came to be, but I just like to do weird fantasy type stuff. Like I draw, so I take ideas that are from my head, and then I work. I, you know, I, I work with a collective of creatives, and then they say, "Yeah, let's do it," and then we just kind of just go from there. But I never thought in a million years like that. Like I went from going to school to draw to being a photographer. Like it's just it's just interesting how that went, and and to segue in that I know you do you do art like the the liquid metal. Can you like explain to me like the process between like how you took art and liquid metal and like made it your own? <laughs> um, well, I kind of fell into that. that. I uh, I was actually a trainer, trainer before. before. You know, after yeah, my Mortal Kombat days, days, and then I had kids and, kids and all that stuff, stuff, I started a training, training company, and, and um, I, I kept on injuring myself. I was I was marathoning, and I was teaching other people how to marathon. Also, also and um, I just I kept on injuring myself, so I found myself in the orthopedic surgeon's office. You know, time and time after, and everybody was telling me, or all these doctors were telling me, you need to just calm down, quit doing so much. And I'm like, I am not doing any more than the average person is doing that isn't training for a marathon. If anything, I was scaling back, and I was still injuring myself. So I think I was in the orthopedic office. And the doctor had gone out of the room, and he left the computer screen on. And I started counting how many visits. After I had counted how many times, you know, I've been in there, I, I thought there's got to be something wrong. And so I went home and I started Googling my symptoms. And I've always been really flexible. And um, growing up, you know, I could have been a contortionist. My dad made me do um, tricks and when he would have parties and stuff, you know. Um, you know, Carrie, do the splits or Carrie, do this, you know, and touch the back of your head with your feet. <laughs> That kind of stuff. Um, I was in gymnastics, and I, I had a lot of dislocations growing up. You know, like I would open up a pickle jar and dislocate my fingers. And so I, I started Googling all that, and this, this condition called Ehlers-Danlos came up. And I thought, what the heck is that? It's a connective tissue disorder, and things like to stretch, but they don't like to stretch back. So, and that would be why I was so flexible. So... I go to my chiropractor and I said, um, I think I might have this condition. It was like when I read all the symptoms and the lifestyle and all that stuff, it was like my life suddenly made sense. And my chiropractor laughed at me. He says, you don't have that, Carrie. <laughs> it's like one in 10,000. You don't have it. I'm like, okay. So three years goes by, three more years of you know injuries and dislocations and all that. And 
um, I finally meet somebody on Facebook who has it. She had these finger splints on. And I was asking her about these silver splints that she had on her fingers. And she said, it's to keep my finger, my joints from dislocating. And I go, really? I have the same problem. And we started comparing our lives. And I'm like, there's got to be, I, I have to have. She said she had Ehlers Danlos. And I said, I, I, I know I have it. So I started finding a professional that, you know, knew about it. And I found one at a Lutheran General in Illinois here. And um, within 10 minutes of me being in his office, he says, yeah, you have it. And suddenly everything just kind of made sense. And I had to quit marathoning because it was like the worst thing I could be doing. I had to quit my hot yoga because that's like the worst thing. You know, you don't want to be stretching things if they don't stretch back, right? Right. <laughs> so I had to, I had to, you know, this is a long story for for the question that you asked me, but <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> it's important. <laughs> uh, so I had to find, I had to find another love instead of running because I absolutely loved running. I loved racing. I loved, you know, going to the finish line and, you know, the, the feeling that it gave me. And, um, I started painting, you know, I, my, th my, my husband who's now, then he was just my friend. And he says, if you could just give up all of that and do whatever you wanted. I said, I don't know, I guess I'd start painting, open up a studio or something. And he goes, you do it, do it, I'll support you. So I started painting and within the first couple paintings that I did, it was like those kids that sit down at a piano and just know how to play. It's like I sat down at my canvas and I just, I knew what colors to mix and I knew what to do. And it was just like, it was in my head just waiting to come out. I mean, I painted a little bit in high school, but it was, never anything like the realism and stuff that I that I had started to do and um, I don't know if you can show some realism from my old works that I did or if you've seen it but it was like I had this this um, copy machine in my head and it was just coming out and every time I finished a painting I would get that feeling like crossing the finish line so I just wow. went with it and people started receiving it and then I started entering into shows and I was getting into these shows that were that were um, juried, you know, around Chicago. I mean, I don't, I don't think there's anything more competitive than t Chicago art shows, you know. <laughs> right. So, I mean, I'd only been painting for like six months, and I remember sitting at one of my first art shows. This guy comes into my into my booth, and he's got a sweater over his shoulders and those round glasses, and he's got books under his arm. <laughs> he's like looking at all my art, and he goes. I can tell you're very mature in your in your work. And he goes, where did you study? And I go, I didn't study anywhere, I'm just self-taught. And he looks at me and goes, how long have you been painting? And I said, oh, almost a year now. And he goes, Pff. and he just was so disgusted with me, he just walked out of my booth. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, raw talent, and just walks out. <laughs> so I guess I pissed him off, I don't know. But <laughs> things just started evolving, and, and pretty soon the abstract stuff um, really started getting me. I really, really loved it. it. I loved the patterns. I loved, you know, I, I had these layers and stuff in my head, and I wanted these layers to come out on the canvas. And um, I had known about this liquid metal stuff that was in jars that you put on statues and stuff to make them look rusted. Yeah. That one behind me right now. I love that. Is there is that a, a an, an acrylic um, resin on top? No, that's canvas. That's the liquid metal. That's actually um, iron. It's liquid iron. Oh. And then I paint a chemical on it to make it oxidize. So it's actually it's iron on there. And it that's beautiful. Know, the paintings only weigh like fifteen pounds, so it's <laughs> canvas. Each so, panel. Yeah. So it's very light. Um, wow. It's, you know, easy to travel with for shows and all that stuff. And so I just started using this stuff and I started, I mean, granted, at first I just had a bunch of mud on canvas. <laughs> <laughs> I had to um, work it out and try to, you know, persuade it to do one thing and, and get the colors the way I wanted to go. And I started adding copper and bronze and getting the verdigris to go in there. And um, it just kind of turned into that. And then I started getting into resin. And um, there's some of the works where I do the liquid metals and the resin together and um, just uh, 
a lot of my work has a lot of layers and um, there's a story behind everything and everything has a special name to it or, you know, something prophetic or, you know, a verse or something to go with it. I, I see your work and I see something that's very, it's so abstract. It's like you can't define it or compare it to anything because it's automatically different. And so when you do put your, your when you go into painting, do you let the work kind of create its own uh, form or do you kind of have a, a, a concept in mind on how you kind of want it to look like? Um, I have a concept in mind on how I want it to look, but sometimes it doesn't always work out that way because it is organic and organic stuff likes to do its own thing. Um, but as far as this, I mean, I start with, with texture first and then I add paint and then I add the metals over it and then I add the chemicals. So, um, it does take, take a while to get to, you know, the last, the last layer, but yeah, there has to be a plan. Otherwise you're just going to get a bunch of mud like I did in the beginning. <laughs> now, when did you start to, when did you start to like, kind of price your work and saying like, All right, th I, this this is the price that I'm going to sell my work and and if they buy it, they buy it and they don't, they don't. Like when, when was that, when did you decide that you should start selling? Um, I, I do have a pretty good business mind. I don't wanna like, say I really do and people are like no she don't <laughs> um I do a lot of planning and I'm very very organized and there was like a scientific method to like the sizing and um I just I have my like my little calculator of of you know the size and what materials I use and how much it costs and how many hours I put into each piece and and that goes with my pricing you know, the higher the price, either the chemicals or, or the um, the supplies are more, or I put more time into it. Oh, that's beautiful. Now I've seen a lot of your like so some of your work I see has like a lot of like blues and, and purples and whatnot, like that intergalactic kind of look. What kind of is that? What what kind of metal is that? First of all, like these are usually copper or bronze, and they combining those together kind of gives that. Yeah, I use two different um, verdigris chemicals to make them go either green or blue to get that depth. Oh, wow. And also dry <laughs> time. It, the way that I dry them, like if I use a lot of heat and light, it'll go lighter. And if I, if I let it dry really slow, it'll be darker. I'm giving away all these secrets. Oh, this is an exclusive podcast. <laughs> they already know somewhat my name. <laughs> um, so in terms of what, what do you find the most challenging in bringing work to your like to new audience? Like you, you have an idea, you have the, the concept, you put it on canvas and now it's time to introduce it to the audience. How do you like what, what, what challenges do you face with kind of introducing them something new? Well, I mean, you being a photographer, you should know that there's a lot of prep that goes into a finished piece. Um, yeah. I can't just like take a picture of it, you know, you have to, you have to have the right lighting and you have to make sure, especially with the resin pieces, because it's like taking a picture of glass, you know, you got right. reflections that you got to worry about. And then, um, and then there's social media and there's posting it on your website and pricing it. And there's just so many steps that you have to do to, before you can actually um, market your piece so it's there's there's a lot of time that goes into each piece that I do let loose out into the world <laughs> <laughs> I saw that you had the Mortal Kombat piece with a coaster I actually want one <laughs> yes that one I, I've got to perfect because every time resin likes to do its own thing too you know you you might have it perfectly set and then you'll come back an hour later and things have moved around and you know, getting that dragon to actually look like a dragon in there is uh, <laughs> probably about twenty-five percent so far. <laughs> Seeing a lot of posters, so if I get people to to um, be okay with the abstract dragon, then I can let them loose. But right now, I I need to perfect that. <laughs> Got it. Listen, I'm all I'm cool with the imperfections. That's awesome. I'm more like doing um, the colors. You know, like. I just did a um, Sonya Blade piece yesterday, kind of like her um, her colors, 
and I put it on wood panel and it looks like that's being well received. I've got her kiss of death in the middle. So it's kind oh, of like sweet. a Sonia Blade uh, self-portrait. <laughs> <laughs> that is perfect. Now, now before I even segue into that, because I already have some interesting questions about that, um, how would you, how would you handle the classification of your work? Like, what would you, what would you classify your, your work as, in terms of art expression? Right? Okay. Definitely, because each piece comes from my heart and. I feel something when I'm when I'm creating, and um, everything has a symbol or a meaning or whatever. So, people, I mean, it is subjective. People have their own meaning. Sometimes I won't even know what a piece means. I think I have a meaning to it, and then someone will come and say, "Oh my gosh, that speaks to me in this way because of this." And I'm like, "All right, let's change that." <laughs> <laughs> be yours it has to be your expression as so right oh that's that's awesome no i i, I really like how you kind of just just kind of express yourself and it shows and then it's like obviously art is subjective to everybody's perspective so what would where do you draw your inspiration to actually like create your pieces because mine is from my fantasy realm in my head mine is from pain Pain? Yeah, mostly pain. Pain and emotions a lot. Um, you know, I have twin boys who are very disabled, and um, it's been very hard, you know, for the last 20 years, 23 years, I should say, um, you know, keeping them healthy and alive. <laughs> right. So there's a lot of pain from that. And um, just, you know, growing up, I had a hard upbringing and stuff. And, um, you know, I, I like to draw from that and and express it because I, I think that if you don't find your creative outlet and you know try to express what what you're feeling and keep it all balled up inside that's when you become crazy got it you gotta let it out and 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 as how I see your work it, it kind of feels like it explodes and then it freezes in time if that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> you know, each piece is my own little therapy. You know, whether it's the music that I'm listening to while I do it, or what it actually says on the canvas. Now, now, before I segue into the Mortal Kombat questions, um, do you feel like certain music motivates different pieces of work? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I'm not a genre person. I'm a lyricist. Got it. You no, know, I might listen to hard rock or you know acid rock or hip-hop for one thing and um i think my resin work mostly is hip-hop which is kind of okay. interesting <laughs> when i used to listen to um more of the countryside you know like uh it would just be like realism i'm trying to think back here and then <laughs> classic rock you know my favorite band all time is led zeppelin oh sweet and it's all it's always uh it's always about the lyrics right right i think i think when i when i draw i listen to a lot of lo-fi music and and then if i really want to dig into the emotion aspect i listen to hall of notes oh i love hall of notes i actually have a pandora station called hall of notes <laughs> <laughs> i grew up on that and it was funny for for years i would listen to them and i never knew their name because my mom would always play it and i was like who is this and she's like hall of notes i was like oh i like them <laughs> and then that was it but yeah that's funny all that old stuff all kind of goes together <laughs> right <laughs> now now for the the lovely questions that everybody's been waiting for is um Sonya Blade, how did you how did you even get that character? Because I see now that I know you, now I see that Sonya. I'm not playing as Sonya Blade. I'm playing like a piece of your persona is in Sonya Blade. Mm -hmm. um, it well, I started working with Midway through NBA Jam, the game NBA Jam. Um, I had happened to be doing some production work in the office at Playboy in Chicago. A long time with my dog playing. <laughs> I was like, that was on cue for some reason. 
Um, I happened to be in the office, and um, Jack Hagar called and asked for a couple cheerleaders for this game called NBA Jam, and and they said, "Hey, Carrie, do you want to take this?" You know, because at the time I was modeling for Playboy, I was doing hair and makeup, I was doing production work, I was doing all that stuff, and I said, "Sure." So I talked to him, and I said, "Yeah, I'll try it. I'll bring a friend, and and we'll, you know, hash it out." And then when we, when I got there and when we started shooting, I'm like, I absolutely love this. And with my background, um, you know, with gymnastics and a little bit of karate and um, boxing and wrestling and stuff, um, it just worked out really well because I was able to do the stunt work too. Right. So the next game after that was Revolution X, where I played two characters and worked with Aerosmith for a day. That was a lot of fun. And um, and then Mortal Kombat 3 came around. And they were looking for a new Sonya, and you know I was the new girl in the office <laughs> that was right. doing all these video games, and so they asked me if I wanted to do it, and I said absolutely, and had a blast. Had a blast. It took a long time to shoot that video um, for all the you know the Mortal Kombat scenes and stuff, but um, it 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 was a lot of fun. And then it turned into you know the tour, and here we are, what thirty years later. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's it's funny how it's like we don't realize like, games are like pra practically new, and then now it's like oh, that's an old game, like like, but it's still a classic game that did not it like after all these years, it, it only got better, and and then those they actually released the skin from the new game which I own, and they had the classic outfit, and yeah, which was I thought that was dope. Now, do you feel like? some of that like what do you love about that character Sonya Blade um I think mostly her strength and her independence you know just get, okay getting shit done <laughs> right yeah she's a tough character and she's like even in like the the games they show like she doesn't take shit from no one and she's just very straightforward even in the 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 movie adaptions the animated stuff so i i really like that character and do you you feel like you can relate to that character oh absolutely especially when it comes to my boys how much i fight for them and and i'm just kind of like we're just going to get this done until i figure this out you know i'm 100 percent so yeah i mean i saw that today when we were working on uh getting the webcam to work <laughs> now right um what are the biggest challenges when you were taking on the role of sonya blade like like in in terms of like the i guess the production of of it because i saw like behind the scenes um back then but what do you what was the issues that you had faced like kind of doing the work like um not knowing karate <laughs> I had a little bit of Tang Sudo under my belt. I had a yellow belt at the time, so I, I just knew nothing about it. Right. Form and all that stuff. So, what we did is we had somebody um, behind the camera, and they said, "Okay, do this move. You know, no, you know, keep your hand up, and you know, hold your fist this way." So I was basically just copying somebody to do the moves for the um, MK3. Right. And then when the tour came around, uh, Pat Johnson, who was the, the choreographer, he also choreo choreographed the Mortal Kombat movie, Karate Kid, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. What? He was, um, the, the choreographer for the tour. And he thought I was worthless at first because I knew nothing. <laughs> and he even said it to somebody. And then they told me, and I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> oh, man. Yes, I'll show you. <laughs> I'll show you. <laughs> you know, the producer wanted to have me on the tour because of, you know, I was the original character in the game. Yeah. So those two were fighting and I'm like, hey, can you just give me a chance here? <laughs> <laughs> Along with doing a lot of the promo work, you know, I did the radio stations and TV stations and all that for the tour. Um, we trained for that tour for three months in the Catskill Mountains working 12 hours a day. And I got up every single day. I worked out before the training started and I was like I'm I'm gonna get this done and I'm gonna do it right I'm gonna learn everything and I'm not gonna stop until everybody's happy and I worked my I actually hallucinated one night I was so <laughs> exhausted I was falling asleep in my hotel room and they had these cheesy curtains 
up on <laughs> I forgot about this <laughs> and had these sunflowers all over the all over the curtains and I'm falling asleep and I'm so so tired but you know your muscles are jumping because you've been working so hard I swear to God those two daisies or sunflowers came off of the of the curtain like two eyes and came up at me and started going up and down my bed and I jumped out I'm like what the hell <laughs> <laughs> that exhausted, but I was just so determined to show everybody that I could do this. And um, by the end of the three months, Pat Johnson pulled me aside and he says, I want you to know that I was wrong and you have balls of steel. <laughs> <laughs> so you, it's like, it's kind of like you became the character, but so much more. <laughs> yes. Yeah. My family at the time, they were like, what is what is your deal? Can you come out of character for a minute? I'm like, no, no, this is me. This is gonna be me for a while. <laughs> I cannot come out because if I come out, then I might screw up. <laughs> right. <laughs> I literally was Sonia for like a year. <laughs> oh my god. Now, did you did people recognize you um, when you were like the game just came out? You went to the store. Did people like wait a minute? Or, or like was games that popular enough? Like Mortal Kombat uh, particularly for people to like, oh my God, Sony Blade? Or was it like still kind of getting up there? Well, it, it did happen a few times where people recognized me, um, but you know, it's it was never a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I could go to restaurants and stuff and be fine. Okay, that's that's good because it's like, because sometimes you, you hear these stories, but I don't know, because like being a video game actor and, and doing Playboy and all that, like I don't know how much I don't know how serious the attention was back in the day for people to interrupt because <laughs> nowadays it's not the same where you just like I can't go anywhere so I just wanted to compare the different times and see if people were uh, a super pest <laughs> back in the day. And it's funny because you have you have your um, your fans that know everything about you and then you know there's so many people that know nothing about it. And it was like a perfect example was um, it was like a year ago. My husband and I were at the at the airport and we were sitting in the United Club and having a drink. And I look over and I see this guy staring at me and he's got this hat on. And um, it was kind of a I was kind of getting freaked out. I'm like, why is he staring at me? And I'm just sitting there and I'm on my phone. And I, every time I looked up, he would look away. And and then pretty soon you see this. You see. <laughs> 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 like he's not taking a picture of me? Okay. So I look at his hat and he's got some sort of symbol on his hat. And so I look at him and I go, and I, I take a picture of him just blatantly so he knows that I know. And he was like so embarrassed. But I looked up his hat symbol and it was a gaming, it was a gaming hat. So he was, I think he knew who I was and that's what he was doing. He was like taking a picture of me and probably sending it to his friend. <laughs> so, you know, 20 some later, you know, 20 some years later, people are still recognized me and it's just random once in a great while. I don't really think they changed the look too much <laughs> to all these years. I feel like they still kept it true. And it's like, it didn't really like, for example, I don't know if you know this, but, but in Tomb Raider, have you ever played Tomb Raider? No. So Tomb Raider, you, you did? Yeah, Lara. Yeah, Lara Craft. Yeah, so when they designed that character, I always said when I was growing up, she looks like Angelia Jolie. And that was that was it. Lo and behold, when they designed the character, they designed her based off of Angelia Jolie. So then when she played her in the movie, it was just a match made in heaven. And I was like, wow. <laughs> a little bit of forethought there. Right? <laughs> Just like, um, for example, Nick Fury in uh, the Avengers movies today, the comics had uh, the black version of Nick Fury, but it was based off of Samuel Jackson, the actor. So then they said, listen, we're going to come to you first because we made the character look like you. And he was like, absolutely. And then that was it. That's why they look, I was like, it's just funny how that works. I wonder if anybody kind of did that with the with that in mind when they were doing the game, but it was a little different with MK3 because they were using like photorealism to do their their shots. 
we were using real people. Yeah, real people doing the stuff. You know, I would see John Tobias's sketches and stuff, and you know, he had he had forethought and what he wanted his characters to look like, so he would draw them out and then find the actor to match his drawing. So, so do you think he ever happened to see your pictures and said, let me just draw this character? <laughs> I was the second Sonya. You know, you have the Mortal Kombat 1 Sonya. Yeah. Mortal Kombat 3, she changed her outfit and here I am. Ah. <laughs> That's funny. But, um, but yeah, the, so how do you, how's the character how do you feel like the character is do you feel like the character has still has still maintained their in like I guess the integrity do, or do you feel like it's changed over the years because I don't I've never seen her outfit change to make it seem like I don't know more I guess quote unquote promiscuous over the years everyone else has changed except for Sonya Blade but do you feel like that's been consistent with her I think so I mean her boobs have gone up and down in the last 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, she's, she's just so, I, I don't think they want her to look too voluptuous and voluptuous and, and sexy because she's just, she's, she's special forces, you know? Right. She doesn't take crap. And, you know, why would she dress that way? Because, if anybody came on to her, she'd probably just punch him in the face. <laughs> Which she has. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Her integ integrity is, is kind of stuck through. She's gotten a little more ruthless. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Age two. <laughs> Right, and then they gave her a daughter, which is different now. So it's like now I feel like they're moving with the times, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and and my daughter keeps on getting called Cassie all the time on Instagram. Really? <laughs> oh man, she's eighteen now, and um, guys are suddenly starting to notice her. And you know, with Cassie coming out in Mortal Kombat, they're like, "Hey, it's Cassie! It's Cassie!" <laughs> Well, it's, it's, it's interesting that you have a daughter and then they're practically around like the same age of character. It's just like, I was like, oh, it's just what you put into the universe. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. They got some twins in wheelchairs. We'll see about that. Well, listen, they've been adding a lot more diversity in a lot of movies and video games. <laughs> so I was like, I'm, I'm all for the change. You know, it took some time just for that, just to have female characters really take off as leads because people were complaining about oh it's a female character it took laura and a couple other characters like metroid prime to be exact and then it started to branch out so now we're having more female leads in video games which is which is great because that's one of my my favorite games like um i'll give you an example other than laura craft horizon which is a um, the main character is a woman and she's you don't think about that. You're thinking about the character in the story. And I feel like we need more of this going on, you know? Yeah. And then my my youngest son, Sam, he's kind of gotten through this, you know, without anybody noticing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I don't know, because maybe because he's a guy or, or whatever, but um, I think my son, Sam, is probably the most like me. You know, he's, we, our minds are pretty the same. He's, he's just a very smart guy and he's very artistic. And so is Leah. Leah's very artistic too. But, um, yes, Sam and I, we have these very in-depth conversations all the time and, and, um, it's pretty interesting, but he's like, he's fine standing in the back shadows and nobody giving him any attention. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's, it's different how, it's how people grow up. I used to be introverted. Um, as you can see, that's no, not, <laughs> not the case, but it took time one by one. Cause I, when I was doing, taking pictures of people, I had to, I had to, you know, get out of my shell and then actually talk. And that's, that was seven years ago. So now here we are today. And I was just like, wow, if I, I would have, if this was the opportunity, I'd be like, could we just do like audio or could we just... <laughs> We just like send each other emails, or, you know, so it's definitely growth. 
and I definitely and I like I said I appreciate you even taking the time to even do this uh, this interview um, yeah Thank you for having me I, I love this stuff it's great <laughs> that's awesome my past is awesome <laughs> <laughs> exactly i mean I, I, we don't we don't ask for it but when it presents itself we're like i would love to tell you my life story <laughs> you want to listen okay <laughs> right so my my last question is um in terms of do you do small pieces of of your work like maybe like eight by ten pieces or maybe like a nine by 11 piece? Yeah, I do like 10 by 10s and eight by eights. And um, on my website, I have, you know, gifts under a hundred and that'll list all my work that's under a hundred bucks, you okay. know, somebody a gift or something like that. But yeah, I, I try to have a bunch of different price points because not everybody can afford a $2,000 painting, you know? Yeah, I know that. <laughs> It's already expensive getting camera gear. <laughs> no, that's no, that's great. And where where can the the people find you? I'm on um, Carrie dot gallery. That's my my um, website. And then you know my all my social media handles are at Carrie Ann Gallery. You know Twitter, Facebook, and uh, Instagram. Perfect. Perfect. Um, all right. Now I'm gonna. I always ask everybody this at the end of the show: is what what book would you recommend someone um, to read in terms of, I guess, whether it's like self growth or something that they that would stick on with them for the rest of their life, like something inspiring. It's easy, and you're probably gonna laugh when I say <laughs> I'm a spiritual person, and. Um, in this day and age, there's a lot of people that wonder why God lets things happen. Right. It's because God loves us so much that he gives us choice. Um, it's, it's, it's like watching your toddler, you know, they're, they're teetering and they're teetering and you know, they're going to fall, but you can't go and help them because they're not going to learn. Right. 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 I think my, my favorite book that teaches you about that is, uh, the shack, the shack. Mm -hmm. It's an easy read. It's short, and um, you get so much out of it that sticks with you for the rest of your life. All right, I'm gonna check it out. Who wrote that book? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would find it. I just did I just wanted to find the right book because uh, I was like, I look up the shack, and you know, Google always takes me places. So I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> Siri was like, what do you want? What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you talking to Siri on your laptop? Yes. Oh, I thought you were talking to your phone. Yeah. But then my laptop answered. Oh. <laughs> Damn Apple products. Right. <laughs> but yeah, thank you again, uh, Carrie. We'll definitely be talking, and um, I'm supposed to, I might be going to Chicago to do a photo shoot. Well, not actually not a photo shoot, a filming, a project for somebody. So maybe that photo shoot might come sooner than, than uh, expected. <laughs> awesome. Some sort of octopus or tarantula or something put on my head. All the tra Yeah, I, you'll, you'll be... Yeah. <laughs> you remembered. You remembered. <laughs> Yeah, we definitely do something cool. I have I have something written down, and it, and it ha and then most likely, um, if I can, uh, maybe I'll have to bring that person with us. Is I want to do like maybe like a liquid metal, or maybe have some of your pieces as part of the shoot. Oh, awesome! Right, product product photography, but like with a with a niche. <laughs> awesome, but yeah. Th Thank you so much, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day, and um, enjoy 2021. <laughs> Thanks, you too. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, have a good one. Bye.